Arua M. Iluma. I'm gonna show you some magic. It's the real thing. <laughs> These two videos are deep fakes. The power of deep fakes is an area of, of great concern. Fun deep fakes, a Chinese Elon Musk doppelganger and a Tom Cruise parody account. <laughs> but unfortunately, for every two normal deep fakes, there are 48 explicit deep fakes. Almost every female celebrity likely has a few explicit deep fakes made of her, including Taylor Swift. Swift found herself the victim of explicit deep fakes earlier this year, and it has opened up a conversation much deeper than explicit. Expected. A conversation that involves you, whether you like it or not. If not handled promptly, the world of AI and deepfakes could lead to an internet where every piece of media has been altered, meaning little to nothing can be trusted. Thankfully, there's a few solutions to preventing that future, and I hope you stick around so that you can play your part in keeping the internet a somewhat sane place. Let's talk about what exactly happened with Taylor Swift. A fake AI generated image of her started circulating on Twitter and quickly went viral. Now I can't say certain words on YouTube without being shadow banned by the algorithm. So let's just say that the image was pornographic. With the internet being the internet, this image quickly went viral, racking up more than 45 million views before being removed. Obviously, Swift was upset about this. Who wouldn't be? So what did she do? What is there to do when something like this happens to you? Well, surprisingly little. Let me show you this map. These are the states that have laws addressing deep fake corn. There's only 10. Plus, there are no federal laws regarding the matter. It was reported that Swift considered suing, but the laws simply aren't there yet. For most of the country, it's not even illegal to create this media. So if you were able to somehow track down the person creating this harmful media, most likely you wouldn't be able to do much. Now, if you're Taylor Swift, your army of Swifties, an army of many millions, will come to your defense and report every instance of fake pornographic material, getting it removed from most platforms. Unfortunately, this is happening to thousands of people and most are left with little to no options. Take this streamer, for example. QT T. Cinderella is a Twitch streamer, YouTuber, and podcaster. She's risen to the top of her domain, becoming one of the most prominent names in the space. But that success has also come with a constant battle against deep fake corn of herself. I want to go live because this is what pain looks like. This is what it looks like, okay? Stuck in a depressing cycle, each time she discusses the topic, begging her viewers to stop watching this media, more of it is produced, more of it is consumed. If you are able to look at women who are not selling themselves or benefiting off of being seen sexually, they're not benefiting, they're not selling it, they're not platforming it themselves. If you are able to look at that, you are the problem. You see women as an object. We can see after this particular stream where she is seen distraught by the harm that this has caused her and those around her, the searches for her deepfake videos skyrocketed. In fact, shortly after that video, another streamer was caught watching explicit deepfake videos of his fellow streamers. I've never done anything like that. I've never done anything like that on a stream. You might think that his viewers were on his side. Not at all. Most of the comments followed something along the lines of, where's the link? I need it for research purposes. Or, no one cares, send the link. This is the state of this issue. Any attempt by these women to suppress the harmful media amplifies it. A classic example of the Streisand effect. The most insane part of this whole thing, this technology has so much more room to advance. Take this side by side. The image on the left is the cutting edge AI technology from just two years ago. For the prompt, a stylish woman walks down a Tokyo street filled with warm glowing neon and animated city signage. Now take the same prompt and ask 2024 AI to replicate it and you get this. This technology is getting better, faster, more accurate, and easier to use. It makes you wonder where else this technology is being used for harm. Well, it turns out basically everywhere. But first, did you know that 98% of my viewers are not subscribed? You should consider subscribing. All right, that's all. Some sources claim that already 20 to 30% of the written text on the internet is AI generated. Misinformation expert Nina Schick claims that the large majority of all online content will be artificially generated within the next year, meaning fake content will be published from all over the world, creating more cases of defamation than ever before. Ironically, we already have an example of this scenario again with Taylor Swift. 
Just a week after the fake lewd photos of Swift went viral, another deep fake of her went viral, but this time holding a sign that says, Trump won, Democrats cheated. It gained over 10.3 million views before being removed by Twitter. X. Unfortunately, 10 million views is nothing compared to the influence of AI media in the near future. We aren't ready for the new age of the internet, where almost all photos and videos are either generated or altered by AI. Some believe it's only the start to the dead internet theory, a theory that believes that the internet will soon be taken over by bots and AI generated content, leaving organic human activity only to exist in the small corners of cyberspace. Which really shows how much of a bigger conversation this this is. How do we control the massive oncoming wave of disinformation, fake stories, images, and videos? If the laws for creating harmful media aren't established yet and are barely in discussion, what's the solution? As I mentioned before, I hope you stick with me through here because in knowing this, you can play your part in keeping the internet alive. Now you may be asking yourself, why can't we just remove this content? It's the main method we've used so far. YouTube and Facebook remove upwards of 12 million posts every year. Why don't we just scale up? Well, it's not that straightforward. Let me show you this story. I think it will help you understand why censorship doesn't always work as planned. This is Rajat Kar. He has quite a controversial past. He's a serial entrepreneur from India who started a company called Appin. Allegedly, this company began offering hacking for hire. You could log into the portal, order that a specific company or individual be hacked, make a payment, and then receive the requested hacked information. Some way or another, reporters at various news agencies received word of this. Articles were posted disclosing the details of this sketchy company, but they remained online for only a brief period. Carr flexed his legal muscles and managed to threaten reporters into removing stories about the hack for hire industry. Once it was realized that Carr was forcing articles to be removed, the journalism community jumped into action. They created new articles and shared them as much as they could. They helped Carr become a target target of the free speech community, and his name became most associated with this hack for hire industry. You see, by censoring the press, a community formed in spite of his actions, and in turn, the story became much bigger than it likely would have been without the censorship in the first place. The same thing happens in our politics. A claim or theory gets posted, the story is removed, and the community behind the post only rallies stronger. Rightfully so. Freedom of speech is a huge part of our civil rights? Is it justified to limit that right just because the truth behind the statements is murky? I guess the answer to that question depends on your beliefs. But I'd like to think that there is an answer to disinformation that isn't contingent on individual beliefs. A couple, in fact, and they have to do with Finland and washer machines. Let me explain. Let's start with the washer machines. In 1907, there was only one brand of washer machine, Automatic Electric Washer Company. It sold so well that by the 1920s, there were over 1,300 companies producing washers. In order to protect the buyer, a consumer union started mobilizing millions to help inform people of what they were purchasing and understanding the risks associated with certain cheap products. We are now facing a very similar scenario. What used to be an industry of a few sources, vetted and fact-checked, has splintered into endless sources. There is now little to no barrier of entry to influence a large group of people, meaning Meaning the need for a movement and advocacy group is higher than ever. A group of news consumers that weigh the reliability of various news sources that urges social media platforms to be more transparent. A group that remains diverse, continuously striving to avoid ideological bias. Combine that with Finland and we'd remove a massive amount of power from misinformation campaigns. Now, what do I mean by combine that with Finland? Well, let's take a look at this graph here. This shows how resilient countries were against misinformation. Finland scored number one out of 35 countries, but that's no coincidence. Finland has launched a nationwide fake news initiative aimed at teaching students, journalists, residents, and politicians how to counter false information designed to create division. The lessons include how to identify bots, how to determine whether or not a video is a deep fake, and how to recognize and understand the psychological manipulation that is employed in every example of misinformation. If implemented in more countries, we take a massive step forward in our goal to reduce the impact that misinformation has on our society, especially 
Eventually, since AI technology will advance, it will become harder and harder to tell what's real and what's not, but the psychological tactics beneath the media will remain the same. Teaching people those tactics will peel back the mystery of this harmful media and allow us to take back the ability to think for ourselves. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed that, you should watch another video. You're here, you're on the channel. It's right here, just click it.